Okay. So, uh, hello world, particularly Salam Afghanistan. My name is uh, Jawad Atbin, a PhD candidate at Nagoya Institute of Technology Japan and a part-time AI researcher at Kyoto University. Okay. Yeah, we... So, uh, hello world, particularly Salam Afghanistan. My name is uh, Jawad Atbin, a PhD candidate at Nagoya Institute of Technology Japan. Uh, yes. Today, we are going to present a webinar about environmental challenges in Afghanistan. The researcher, lecturer, specialist, and expert from Afghanistan, Japan, and Malaysia come together to talk about recent research in the thematic discussion topic. This webinar initiated and organized by Alberini University, one of the best public universities in Afghanistan in collaboration with the Department of National Environmental Protection Agency, Badakhshan, and DIAGRI Afghanistan. I am honored to moderate this webinar. We have two keynote speakers, Dr. Freydun Karimi from Alberuni University and Ms. Faiza Darkhani from Badakhshan University. And we have five presenters and speakers, as Mr. Ehsanullah Akramzoy from Ghazni University, Mr. Ahmad Rashid Khushbin, Mr. Ahmad Shabi Hozad from Badakhshan University, and Dr. Uh, Siritaran. Uh, Maruto Viran from University of Potra, Malaysia, and Mr. Emal Ahmad Osenjad from Alberi University. Uh, and I would now like to give the floor to our first keynote speaker, Dr. Faidun Karimi, Alberi University Vice Chancellor, uh, to give a keynote speech. Yes, please. Hello, everyone. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it okay? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank all the 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 first Mr. Hakbin for the moderation of this uh, webinar, and Emil Ahmad Hussain Zod and other friends for organizing and uh, the professor from the European Malaysia and uh, Ms. Darkhani and uh, the, uh, from Ghazni University, from DIAGRI, from the other part, the other part, the other part of the Afghanistan and outside of Afghanistan. Thank you for being here and having me here. Uh, First of all, I ask you all to kindly, for the honor of the cruel attack uh, to our uh, university staff, Alberian University staff, we lost two of our best friends. We ask you all to have uh, one minute silence for their honor, respect them, and then we are sorting. I think Everyone is here? Yes. Okay. Okay, again. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, thank you for all of you for being here and also for, for organizing this uh, particular webinar on particular issues, the main challenges of Afghanistan. And uh, for uh, introduce myself, although already they introduced by uh, Dr. Hakbin. This is uh, Karimi from Alberini University. Uh, I'm working right now as a Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs of the university. My professional is uh, horticulture and also I'm working uh, in uh, environmental issues and 
food safety, food security issues also. So this is very, very fortunate for us to have the first webinar in this particular issue, and this is very important. Uh, as I said before, we, in the last week, in the last week, we had a tragic accident, roadside bombing to uh, Albanian University uh, bus. We lost two of our best friends. Let us start uh, with prayer for their souls and asking God for the recovery of the uh, injured people, injured our injured colleagues. So the main challenges of the environmental challenges of Afghanistan is very, very huge and very, very clear to, first of all, we need to start from the agenda and then the presenters will start to, to express or uh, present their uh, in detail each issues in detail and particular issues they are going to present. In Afghanistan, there are big ch uh, challenges and big issues against the environmental protection. First of all, urbanization is the main challenge in Afghanistan. And then it is because of many uh, causes, many factors. First of all, it is because of war. People are gathering in the cities to uh, find a job and to to find a job and uh, find the food for eating. And insecurity in the rural area is uh, the main issue. The second issue is, the second factor for this, it is because of uh, changing the habit of the people because people migrated from, to other countries during the civil war. And when they returned from uh, outside of the country, and uh, outside of the countries, the, uh, while they were migrators, their habits changed from rural inhabitants to city in, uh, inhabitants, and they grasped the habit of staying or living in the cities. When they returned from the outside, they avoided to, uh, to join back their villages, and they stood in the cities so that the urbanization and the population of the uh, cities increased. Yes. I think it's still friends are arranging. Do we have everyone? Uh, Professor Sritaran is not there still. Ahmad Shabir. Yes, here. Ahmad uh, Rashid. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. I have your voice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, urbanization is the first issue. The second is due to this urbanization, waste increased the waste production. And waste production and not uh, proper management of the waste or poor management of the waste of the cities, especially the, uh, for example, if we see the, uh, look to the Kabul city as a case uh, study, the Kabul city, even the municipality cannot provide the exact amount of uh, waste production in the city and how much they are handling or managing the waste. The other issue is, not having the clear policies for to protect or avoid destruction of the environment. For example, recently we developed the wildlife protection policy. Other issue is not implementing or miscoordination between the different organization of the government for implementing these policies. We had no policy recently, we developed some 
policies for this to, for example, to uh, control the uncontrolled hunting of the wildlife. On the other uh, side, miscoordination between organization of the country caused to not implement properly the policies. The waste management is a big, big challenge right now in Afghanistan. For example, municipalities of the Kabul city says daily 3,500 waste, solid waste is produced in Kabul city. And the majority portion is organic waste. The other main portion is plastic based. But for the plastic base, for example, they have no clear policy to, for example, to recycle, to manage this. And they are just giving some speech, some advertisement to avoid plastic usage. Although plastic usage in developed countries, it has no alternative because plastic is light, strong, easily available everywhere. So people are, cannot reject the pl plastic usage or avoid plastic, they are using plastic. On the other side, there is no clear policy to manage the plastic waste. Other issue in the, or the other challenge in the environmental protection issue in Afghanistan is political assignment of the governmental officials in the key organization of their acting active in the environmental protection. If we look at the environmental protection agency of Afghanistan, always it is political assignments. They are assigning some, adv uh, some advisors when a key staff of an organization, a main organization, Uh, I think uh, Dr. Karimi uh, disconnected and uh, he come back. Yeah, for the for time constraint. Think, yeah. Yeah, this is the problem of Afghanistan. We lost internet and we connected. So that uh, I said that political assignment of the key staff of the key organization they are active in environmental management. So these are manageable. For example, if we have a clear policy to protect wildlife and implement or coordinate, properly co coordinate between the different organization of the governmental or non-governmental organizations, or we have the policies, clear policy and accept the concepts people providing or the university staff providing accept the concept to uh, protect the environment or at least to manage the waste of the city it is possible if we, if the government the governmental key actors in the environmental protection issues if they have decision if they have they have plan for it some programs, some projects are designed, concepts are provided and implementing, but the implementation process, in, this is another issue. The implementation process is just implementing the formalities. For example, 20 days before we joined in a huge program to provide the concepts for the waste management or for the municipality uh, management improvement. We prepared three very best concepts and we uh, assigned these concepts for the program and we presented in very enthousi enthusiastically. But after that, 
we saw that it is just formalities. They are implementing just formalities. They are even not at the position to listen and understand the concepts. The, the, the main idea or the main component of the concepts. This is the another issue. The programs are implementing just in formality manner. They are not gathering information or concepts clearly or uh, uh, for to use it for developing the policies or strategies to really implement environmental protection measures. So that once again, I'm thanking for the organizing this presentation, this webinar. I wish we have number of visitors they're joining through DAGRI or Facebook or whatever from this Zoom meeting. And I wish we have a best webinar on the platform, a basement for improved, for developed, for very better webinars in the future and uh, the uh, programs that their outcomes are going to be implemented in the area and we have uh, at least reduce environmental challenges in our uh, country. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fredun Karimi for your nice keynote speech. For a uh, time constraint uh, matters, we have to move to another speakers, keynote speakers, and kindly remind all the speakers and presenters to uh, respect that time constraints in order to uh, move smoothly to uh, make our webinar successful. Thank you very much. So our next uh, keynote speaker uh, is, uh, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, the next key speak, uh, keynote speaker is Ms. Faiza Darhani from uh, Badakhshan University. Yes, please. Ten minutes keynote speech. I think we are we we not having her right now. So let's skip her for the time being now, and we will come back if she uh, attend the webinar later. Uh, Salam, sorry to disturb you. Uh, Ms. Darhani has uh, left a message in WhatsApp and she has said that she cannot join the okay. Uh, okay. webinar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if she's for the well or... Okay, okay, no, no, no problem. We can understand that situation in Afghanistan is not stable. So people may face different difficulties uh, covering from technical to, I mean, other, other like internet connections some maybe other problem. So we will jump and move to another uh, the first uh, presenter. Our first, uh, we'd like now give the floor to our first uh, presenter. Uh, uh, let me share uh, the screen. So, our first presenter and speaker is uh, Ehsanullah Akranzai uh, from uh, Ghazni University. So uh, could you please start your presentation if you have a source file of your slides so you can share it. Uh, all right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would like uh, to reintroduce myself. I'm Ehsan Lakramzoui, Master of Science in Environmental Management, Climate Change, and a lecturer at Hassan University. Uh, I am very uh, happy uh, that I have this session with our uh, other uh, uh, speakers from different universities. Uh, now time I don't uh, have uh, 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 slides uh, with myself, so, so I'm kindly request you to uh, make me the presentation. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, uh, I, I, we would like to suggest the speaker to present and share their slides. If they cannot, so uh, the technical desk will help them to do that. 
So here I share your slides. So yes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, and 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 and, and uh, excuse me, please. You can you can you can hand out to me and say like slides number one, two, three, and move to the next slide. So uh, let's guide okay. me to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, and for no, uh, as you know, Lidunko, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that's the day programs are not the water record show a day, or we know she. اکثر از مونگ دیگه برنامه پالوارش چی دی و افغانستان که هم زیاد خلق دی نو پادی اصاس پانده مخت اجازه را کل شویده چی پا پختو داری او یا هم انگلیسی بانده اخپال موضوع مونگ رانده کلو از ما داغ موضوع چی ده ده اقلین ده بدلون پا مقابل که ده توافق لار چاری دی چنگ که ولی شو مونگ ده هارتی کلچر سکتور سابا و خاصتا رومی بانجان د اقلیم د بدلون په مقابل کې ورته سازګاري ورکو او د هغه د توافق لارې چارې وپېژنو نو زما د دې پرزنټېشن اصلي موخې دا دي چې کلایمېټ چینج یا د اقلیم تغییر څنګه سابا د هارتي کلچر سکتور او رومي بانجان ته خپل تاثیر لاندې او په دوهم قدم کې باید موږ وپیو کړي چې د اقلیم د بدلون په مقابل کې لارې چارې کومې دي Please, another slide. Please move to uh, slide number three. No, the day of our bad uh, mug your land معمولا د اقلیم بدلون چې دی د د اتموسفیر په شرایط کې تغییرات دي یوازې دا نه چې دا د حرارت په درجه کې د تغییرات دي بلکې دا د اورښ په درجه کې هم تغییرات دي ولې دغه دوه فکتورونه چې یو د تودوخې درجه ده او بل هم بارندگی ده یا اورښ ته د د اقلیم د تغییر یو له مهمو فکتورونو څخه دي د دې تر څنګ د اقلیم بدلون کې بعضې نور فاکتورونه لکه سیلابونه وچکاله یا هم درنګه طوفانونه برخه اخلي د ای پی سی د 2001 کال د راپور له مخې د سویل کې چې ته 2000 کال پورې په دنړی منځنۍ تودوخه د 6.4 درجه سانتي ګریټ او هم درنګه بهرونه ته 50 سانتي متر پورې ارتفاع لوله شي یعنی په مجموع کې د اقلیم بدلون چې دی دغه فکتورونه ته شاملی لکه ما چې یادونه وکړ نړۍ ګرمېږي تودوخ درجه لوړېږي او رختونو کې تغییر راځي سیلابونه رامنځته کېږي وچکالۍ رامنځته کېږي او همدارنګه طوفانونه رامنځته کېږي دا چې موږ یادونه وکړه چې د اقلیم بدلون کې تر ټولو مهم دوه فکتورونه برخه اخلي یو د تودوخې درجه او بل هم اورښت نو ضرور لیدل کېږي چې د اقلیم د بدلون لپاره موږ او تاسو د اقلیم د تودوخې درجې ډېټا وګورو دلته په دغو لومړي ګراف کې موږ او تاسو وینو چې تر دوه زره او لاس څخه تر دوه زره او سل کال پورې د افغانستان د تودوخې درجه په هغه صورت کې که چیرې موږ او تاسو میډیکیشن میجرز ونه لرو د شپږ اشاریا درې درجې سانتي ګریټ په اندازه باندې لوړېږي او له بل طرفه که چیرې موږ او تاسو د توافق لارې چارې هم په کار باندې واچوو یعنې د میټیګیشن میجرز په کار باندې واچوو په هغه صورت کې به د دوه اشاریا شپږ درجې سانتي ګریټ په اندازه باندې د تودوخې درجه لوړه شي او په دې بل ګراف کې د لسو کلونو ډېټا ما د کابل ولایت د دهسرز ولسوالۍ د میټرالوژیکل ډیپارټمنټ څخه حاصل لیدلی او په دې کې مې دا انالایز کړي دي چې د تودوخې درجه کوم طرف ته روانه ده تاسو وینئ د ګراف څخه چې د تودوخې درجه د حرارت درجه په افغانستان کې مخ په لوړېدو باندې ده نو پس موږ او تاسو د دې څخه دم مطلب اخلو چې په افغانستان کې د اقلیم تغییر واقعا یوه پېښېدونکې خطر دی او د تودوخې درجه مخ په لوړېدو باندې ده پلې 
Please move to another slide. همدارنګه موږ یادونه وکړه چې د اقلیم د بدلون دوهم ډیر مهم فکتور چې دی هغه بارندګي یا ورښت دی هغه ډیټا چې ما د کابل ولایت د حساب سکول سوالات څخه خاص ده د لاس کالو ډیټا معمولا په دې کانال شوی ده موږ ته کوي چې د ورښت درجه چې ده په افغانستان کې ورس په ورس د کموالي سره مخامخ ده دا چې افغانستان څلور سوه ملي متره په اوسط ډول بر کلنی اورښت کې لرلو په دغو لس کلونو کې موږ اوسط بارندګي چې ده دوه سوه او شل ملي متره ده یعنې هغه کلونه لکه دوه زره او اته دوه زره او لس دوه زره او شپاړس دوه زره او پنځلس دا هغه کلونه دي چې په افغانستان کې وچکالۍ وي یا هم د دې تر څنګ که وچکالۍ نه وي ورښتونه په ډېره کمه اندازه ترسره شوي دي نو له د دوو دوو ګرافو څخه موږ دا نتیجه اخلو چې هم د تودوخې درجه مخ په لوړېدو ده او هم د ورښتونو اندازه ورځ په ورځ په افغانستان کې کمېږي باید دا ووایو چې د اقلیم بدلون څنګه هارټیکلچري نباتات سابه او خصوصا رومي بانجان ته تاثیر لاندې راولي معمولا په نړیواله سطحه باندې نن ورځ د اقلیم بدلون تقریبا تر پنځوس سلنې پورې د اکثره هارټیکلچري نباتاتو لپاره د هغه د حاصل د کمېدو باعث شوی دی او د دې تر څنګ د اقلیم بدلون ځینې خاص مشکلات رامنځته کوي د ژمي د تودوخې په درجه کې کمښت ده یعنې هغه ورځ په ورځ باندې کومه سړه هوا د ژمي چې ده هغه کمېږي دې تر څنګ د نباتاتو د کرلو په وخت کې مشکل رامنځته کېږي تغییر رامنځته کېږي د دې تر څنګ د نباتاتو د ګل کونې او د هغې د حاصل اخیستنې په وخت کې تغییرات رامنځته کېږي او همدارنګه په مجموع کې د نباتاتو په پولینیشن یا په ګرد افشانۍ باندې منفي اغېز لري اوس به په دې خبره وکړو چې څنګه تغییر اقلیم یا د اقلیم بدلون په سبو باندې د سبو په اصل باندې تاثیر وریدوي معمولا په دې کې خاص فکټورونه برخه اخلي یو هم د تودوخې لوړېدل دي معمولا تودوخې لوړېدل څنګه چې موږ ته د ګرافونو څخه معلومه شوه چې په افغانستان کې د تودوخې درجه ورځ په ورځ باندې لوړېږي او هغه سناریو چې تا دوه زره او سل کال پورې د افغانستان په اړوند باندې ورکړل شوي دي تر شپږ اشیا دوه درجه سانتي ګریډ په تودوخه نوره هم لوړېږي په هغه صورت کې که چیرې موږ میټیګیشن میژرز ونه لرو نو معمولا که چیرې تودوخه لوړېږي هغه اوبه چې موږ او تاسو د اپخور دپاره ضرور دي د هغو کې کموالی رامنځته کېږي د دې تر څنګ سلیبیټي مشکل لري چې مالګې پرې دي سیلابونه رامنځته کېږي نو په مجموع کې به دغه د سبو رومي بانجانو په ټوله کې زراعت د سکتور دپاره یو زیانمنوونکی فکتور وي همدارنګه وچکالۍ یا ډراوټس چې دي دا هم خپل تاثیر لري موږ او تاسو وینو چې دا سخت کال په افغانستان په اکثره ولایتونو کې خوشکسالی او وچکالی را منسته شویده او دا چه سابا نوی سلنه دی او بو بخپل ترکیب که او بلری نو دی خوشکسالی را منسته که دل یا وچکالی دی سبو پی تولید بانده پلو یا پیمانه بانده اغیزه که ولیش چی همدارنګه هغه هیواد لکه زمونږ غوندې چې هغه د ډرای هیواد وي یعنې وچ هیواد وي د هغو تودوخې درجه ورځ په ورځ لوړېږي نو د مالګو رامنځته کېدل د افغانستان په خاورو کې د واقعا یوه ستونزه ده نو دا چې د یوې خوا نه د حرارت درجه لوړېږي او د بل طرف په موږ او تاسو بارندګي نه لرو نو معمولا سلینیټي به په افغانستان کې یو غټ مشکل وي همدارنګه د سیلابونو مشکل دی چې هغه که اکثره سبزیجات د سیلابونو یا د ډنډ یا بیارس په مقابل کې ډېر حساس دي نو موږ او تاسو د دې مشکل سره هم مخامخ کېږو لیس مو سلینیټ نمبر نو 
اوس په پدې باندې خبره وکړو چې موږ وویل چې د اقلیم بدلون په افغانستان کې دغه ټول فکتورونه د بد تاثیر لرونکي دي اوس دا ده چې څنګه کولی شو د دې اقلیمي بدلونونو په مقابل کې موږ او تاسو د توافق لارې چارې ولرو اول باید په دې باندې وغږیو چې توافق خاص یوه کړنه نه ده دا په مجموع کې ځینې عملیې دي ځینې پروسې دي او همدارنګه د پیسو کیپیټل په کار باندې وړل دي تر څو موږ او تاسو د اقلیم د بدلون په مقابل کې توافق رامنځته کو معمولا د دې تر څنګ د میټیګیشن کلمه هم استعمالي میټیګیشن بیا دې ته ویل کېږي چې موږ د اقلیم د بدلون هغه عاملین له منځه یوسو یا هم راکم کو یعنی په مجموع کې اډپټیشن چې دی د توافق دی د سیستم د پروسو د عملیو تر څنګ او تاسو د کرنې سکتور توافق ورکړو او میټیګیشن چې دی دا بیا د ګلخانهیي ګازونو را کمول دي یعنې موږ او تاسو هغه سورس آف ګرین هاوس ګاسز موږ او تاسو باید دغه را کم کړو څنګه کولی شو چې ګلخانهیي ګازونه را کم شي او په مقابل کې موږ او تاسو د اقلیم د بدلون د تغییر څخه په امان کې وو معمولا دا چې موږ وویل چې توافق یوازې یو یا دوه کړنې نه دي معمولا توافق چې دی د ورایټي یا د یو ان او یو کالټیوار په اساس باندې رامنځته کېدلی شي دا په کرنې په سکتور کې یوه ډېره مهمه خبر ده چې موږ او تاسو مقاومې ورایټي ولرو تر څو چې پېژندل شوې مقاومې ورایټي ومنه پېژندل شي او د هغې څخه ګټه ونه اخیستل شي موږ نه شو کولی شي د اقلیم د بدلون په مقابل کې توافق ولرو د دې تر څنګ ځینې عملي موږ او تاسو باید په کار باندې واچوو چې یو له هغو څخه ملچینګ دی هغه که ارګانیک این ارګانیک عضوي یا غیر عضوي هر ډول ملچینګ چې وي ملچ کول په خپله توافق له ستراتیژۍ څخه یوه ډېره مهمه ستراتیژي ده او ډېره مهمه عملیه ده او همدارنګه موږ او تاسو د کرنې سکتور خصوصا سابه او رومي بانجان کولی شو چې د هغه د کرلو د وخت له مخې توافق ورکړو اکثره ساحې چې نن ورځ اقلیم تغییر کړی دی د هر وخت درجه تغییر کوي ځینې په یو وخت کې او ځینې په بل وخت کې موږ او تاسو کولی شو چې وکړو او بل مهمه خبر دا ده چې موږ او تاسو د کیمیکل فرتیلایزر په ځای باندې د لیکویډ فرتیلایزر څخه استفاده وکړو او همدارنګه زیرو تیلیج باید ترسره شي قلبه کول معمولا باید په زیات اندازه سره نه وي دا د توافق له مهمو چارو څخه ده او همدارنګه د ایریګیشن سیستم کې موږ او تاسو باید هغه امپروو سیستمونه رامنځته کړو معمولا باید د ډریپ ایریګیشن څخه استفاده وکړلی شي د څاڅکي سیستم هم یو له د توافق له چارو څخه یوه مهمه چاره بلل کېږي او د دې تر څنګ موږ او تاسو کولی شو چې د فرټیکیشن څخه هم استفاده وکړو بله مهمه خبر په اډپټیشن کې دغه ده چې د اقلیم د بدلون یا د اقلیمي شرایطو فورکاسټینګ چې د سیزونل فورکاسټینګ امپروو آف سیزونل فورکاسټینګ آف کلایماټیک کنډیشن اټس ویري ویري امپورټنټ نو دا موږ او تاسو ډېره مهمه ده چې باید موږ او تاسو د اقلیمي شرایطو هغه پیشګویي ولرو د قانونو ته د کرنې د سکتور خلکو ته مسئولینو ته د اقلیم د بدلون په مقابل کې باید معلومات ورکړل شي او همدارنګه موږ او تاسو باید د هارټیکلچر د سکتور په اړوند باندې د اقلیم د بدلون په اړوند باندې معمولا باید خلکو ته او موږ او تاسو سیاسیونو ته او جامعه ته باید پوهه حاصله شي او جینیټیکل ریسورس چې دی کنسرویشن او جینیټیکل ریسورس ته ډېره مهمه خبره ده موږ او تاسو هغه ورایټیګانې چې هغه اندیمیک یا په خپله د افغانستان اصلي ورایټیګانې دي هغه وساتو او همدارنګه فاینانشل منیجمنټ چې دی یا خلکو د پاره د پیسو له لارې د دهقانانو تقویت ده هم د توافق په مهمو لارو چارو کې راځي دا هغه څېړنه ده چې ما د رومي بانجانو باندې کړې ده دا چې موږ مخکې یادونه وکړله چې معمولا د توافق په لارو چارو کې مهم شان چې دي موږ کولی شو چې پلانټینګ ټایم تغییر کو د دې تر څنګ موږ او تاسو کولی شو چې د ریزیسټنټ ورایټي څخه کار واخلو او همدارنګه موږ او تاسو کولی شو چې د ملچینګ څخه کار واخلو نو دا چې ټولې عملي نه اجرا کېږي ما یوه څېړنه ترسره کړې ده په هغو باندې ما دوه فکتورونه څېړلي دي یو هم پلانټینګ ټایم دی یا د کرلو وخت دی او بل هم ورایټیز دي چینج ان ورایټي څلور مختلف ورایټي ګانې ما په دوه وختونو کې کرلې دي تاسو په جدول کې ګورئ چې د اته شپېته اشاریه شپږ 
ټن په هکتار باندې تر ټولو لوړ حاصل چې دی د رای ګرانډ ورایټي څخه په دوهم وخت کې تر سره شوی دی کوم چې موږ د جون په پنځلسم باندې کرالید وو نو د دې څېړنې څخه دا نتیجه ترلاسه کوو چې د کرلو وخت چې دی او د دې تر څنګ د ورایټي تغییرول یا د ورایټي کې چینج ته یوه ډېره مهمه مسله ده This line number. Uh, the Natijigari Alwant Bat Tuli Habaridas is a Tuli Kamchi Afghanistan, the Aklin, the Badlun Kumakabilki, who has us for what day, Delta the Aklin, the Badlun Moktulip Pakturuna, the Mahsusiki, or Taudoha, or Urecht, the Aklin, the Badlun Yola, Mohemu Pakturuna, Sadi, the Data Sang Silabuna. وچکاله او مالکین خاوره د افغانستان یو لوی ستونزې څخه دی چې کوم د اقلیم د بدلون په نتیجه کې رامنځته کیږي او همدارنګه بعد ووایم چې د تودوخې لوړېدل او د بارانونو موجودیت شدید و بارانونو موجودیت یو له هغه عاملونو څخه دی کوم چې ما په خپله تجربه کې د رومي بانجانو په تولید باندې تاثیر درلودلو هغه څېړنه چې ما تر سره کړې ده په رومي بانجانو باندې د اقلیم د تغییر په مقابل کې یو له ډېرو مهمو د توافق لارو چارو څخه یو هم د کرلو په وخت کې تغییر دی او بل هم د مقاومو او رایټیو کرنه ده موږ باید مختلف او راتیګانې وکړو تر څو توافق تر لاسه کو او همدارنګه دا چې زموږ او تاسو هیواد د دغې اقلیمي بدلونو په مقابل کې یو له حساس هیوادونو څخه دی نو ضرورت لیدل کېږي چې موږ او تاسو په دې اړوند باندې تحقیقونه تر سره کو او د افغانستان د اقلیم بدلون په مقابل کې د کرنې سکتور وساتلی شو دا هغه ځینې ډېره مننه تانک یو فار د ټایم دس از د پرزنټیشن دټ آی هاو فار ناو تانک یو Okay. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, let me kindly uh, inform uh, all presenters that the moderator will assist you completing your presentation on time by informing you when time is about to run out. So please don't mind this one. So the next presenter, uh, the next presenter is Mr. Uh, Ahmad Rashid Khushbin. So could you please uh, share your presentation? Do you have the uh, file? Uh, thank you very much, Hakbin uh, Saeb. A very good morning to uh, all the participants, uh, the friends and colleagues from Ghazni University, Al Biruni University, Balakshan University, the DAGRI team from Japan, uh, and our friends from you, Malaysia. Uh, I hope everybody can see my uh, screen. Yes. Yeah. So today I would like to talk uh, a little about the solid waste management scenarios in Kabul cities, uh, a research that uh, I had conducted during my master's uh, uh, research studies uh, in the Asian Institute of Technology. The full research can be uh, found from this link that I have provided. Uh, so we all know that the uh, population growth, the rapid urbanization and changing lifestyle uh, have uh, <clears throat> resulted into the uh, generation of municipal solid waste. And this generation is faster than the rate of urbanization around the world. If we look into the data, 
uh, we see that in 2016, the municipal solid waste generations were around 1.3 billion tons globally, while it is estimated to be around 2.2 billion tons globally by 2025, which is a big concern, concern around the world regarding its management. So if we look at the uh, Kabul city, uh, we can see that people around here throws about as uh, a waste that is equivalent to 750, uh, the weight of 750 elephants per day, which is a huge concern and issue for the uh, management authorities that are uh, responsible for the waste management around the city. So if we look into the demographic data of Kabul city, we can see that Kabul municipality has a population of around 4.5 million uh, people. The number of households are uh, around 700,000 and similarly the number of commercial units and uh, administrative units are around 10 plus. So we can see that uh, Kabul city has a huge population and the base generation is a, uh, this data, uh, this uh, map shows us the different players or the different other authorities and manage, uh, managerial units that are responsible in Kabul city for uh, solid waste management. So if we look into the municipal solid waste collection and disposal, we can see that the, uh, <clears throat> during the weekdays in Kabul, which is from Saturday to Wednesday, the collection and transportation of waste to the landfill site is quite high. But if we look into the uh, weekend, the collection and transportation uh, becomes very low. Uh, so that's why most of the waste uh, is uh, scattered or thrown around uh, uh, the streets and the <clears throat> drainage line systems around the city. For the disposal of solid waste management, uh, uh, in Kabul city, there is one site or one landfill where uh, open dumping of uh, uh, solid waste management takes place. There is no proper system for the leachate or guest management. This is a picture, <clears throat> a drone picture taken of this uh, landfill site. If we can see that the solid waste management is scattered or thrown or dumped uh, openly, there is no, <clears throat> leachate management system or gas management system. The leachate that is generated flows away to the uh, water, uh, to the surface water and the groundwater systems and the nearby areas. <clears throat> uh, the only uh, treatment or the only proper dumping uh, that takes place at this site is the solid, uh, the soil covering that uh, after each 80 centimeter of so uh, solid waste around 20 centimeter of soil cover is put on the solid uh, waste. But as I said, there is no proper system for the leachate or the gas that is uh, uh, generated or developed at this site. And this has resulted into quite a lot of environmental <clears throat> and social uh, issues uh, at, the, at the surrounding areas. And people are often like uh, complaining about uh, their health issues, their environmental issues. Uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of odor uh, that is generated at this site. So management of other waste streams, we know that uh, apart from the uh, municipal solid waste management, there are construction solid waste uh, and biomedical waste that is generated at quite a high uh, a density or a quite high percentage in Kabul city. If you look into the biomedical uh, waste uh, management, most of the hospitals, uh, they do not have a proper uh, <clears throat> uh, system for uh, management of uh, uh, their, uh, so, uh, their medical waste. Uh, they often throw it together with the uh, municipal solid waste management. We will have uh, uh, some pictures uh, in the next slides that can show us that this medical solid waste uh, uh, is thrown out together with the municipal solid waste. If we look into the construction and demolition waste, we can see that uh, uh, <clears throat> the soil or the mud or the, uh, the, the bricks uh, that is generated is the construction and demolition waste. It is thrown together in the drainage system. And when there's heavy rainfalls in the city. We can see that uh, uh, those um, construction and demolition waste comes up at the top and covers the roads and sur uh, road surfaces around the city, which becomes a huge uh, headache for the management authorities and for the citizens. If uh, uh, the participants, uh, if any of you have seen or visited Kabul city, you can see this uh, type of problems uh, everywhere around the city. So waste generation in Kabul city, the average per capita waste generation in Kabul city is around 0.61 kilogram per capita per day. Uh, this data is taken from the uh, research that we had conducted. So 
Uh, for a city of 5 million people, we estimated that uh, uh, the total waste generation per day will be around 3,500 tons per day. And around uh, uh, from this 3,050 tons per day, around 1,800 to 2,000 uh, tons per day of waste is uh, uh, collected and transported to the landfill site, while the remaining 1,000 to 1,000 uh, 1,200 tons per day uh, remains scattered around uh, the city at different uh, uh, sites. So if we look into the composition of mixed waste, uh, uh, we have around 45% uh, of this waste is uh, uh, food, fruit or vegetable, or we can say organic or compostable waste. So similarly, in the non-Ramadan period, this uh, uh, percentage increases to 52.4%. Uh, percent of the organic or compostable or the food in the fruit vegetables waste. Similarly, the different uh, percentages of the uh, municipal uh, solid waste is provided in here. I will not explain each and every uh, percent of waste, uh, but overall we can see that composition of mixed waste generated in the Kabul city provides us a very good idea that this can as recyclable and can be compostable or can be recycled into different kinds of other products or energy uh, materials. So we conducted a residence uh, survey analysis to check the response of uh, citizens about the different waste management approaches. If you look into this uh, data, the first graph shows us that about 63% of the uh, citizens, uh, they said that they know about the three R approaches. How can they adopt to the three R's? Similarly, they said uh, that they, about 83% of the citizens, they said that they know how can they manage their food waste. Similarly, around 72% of uh, citizens said that they, uh, they know about uh, uh, they throw their uh, waste as mixed waste. So similarly, different kind of percentages were provided for us. So how we analyzed or how this data were useful for us. If you look into this slide, the recycling of waste, we see that there are different players uh, responsible or uh, involved in the uh, recycle, uh, recycling of waste around the city. So the first step is these uh, waste scavengers. There are around 2,000 or 3,000 informal waste scavengers. They collect about 200 or 300 tons per day of waste, and then they sell it to the junk shops. These junk shops then sell it to the recyclers, and these re recyclers convert it or recycle it to different kind of plastic uh, products, new plastic products. If you look into this uh, um, picture on the right side, the, the selling of food waste to livestock. The food waste is currently uh, uh, scavenged or collected, and then it is feed to the livestock around the city. And this uh, food waste often contains the plastic materials that is feed into the livestock, and that is when um, eaten the, the meat is eaten by the citizens. Uh, then they like uh, result in different kinds of uh, diseases, like cancers or other kinds of diseases. So some of the barriers and constraints uh, to three R's uh, in the Kabul city is the residents' willingness to actively participate in PR programs is relatively low. We see in the above site that uh, uh, most of the citizens, they know about the PR programs, they know about how can they manage their food, but their willingness to actually participate or actively participate in these programs is very low. Lack of knowledge of people not not knowing which material can be recycled and which material can be sold to scavengers. Most of the people, although they know that this waste have a very good value uh, of money for them, but they don't know the players who are involved in the recycle around the city so that they can, uh, they can like sell their, vast, uh, their waste, recyclable waste to these scavengers. Less support to the scavengers. As I said, there are 2,000 to 3,000 uh, scavengers around the city, but they are often like uh, in trouble from the police due to security reasons, from the municipal authorities due to uh, law and poli uh, policy reasons. So that's why the, the scavengers uh, don't have that support that they uh, need to like collect all the um, uh, recyclable waste around the city and then they sell it for recycling purposes. Lake of market demand for the recycled materials. Currently in the city, uh, there is only good demand for the plastic materials, the HDP or the LEDP, the, uh, the high uh, density plastic materials. While for the LEDP, the low density uh, plastic materials, they don't have that much of demand in the market from the recyclable uh, companies. 
So often the scavengers, they, don't not, they do not collect uh, these recyclable materials from the, around the city. So, so on, there are many other uh, barriers and constraints for PR in the city. So waste reduction, uh, we estimated that if 25% uh, waste reduction sits as goal gradually in around five uh, uh, years. So we see on this right hand side uh, that the per capita generation, which will be 0 0.78 without any waste reduction strategies, it can reduce to 0 0.41 if we implement the waste reduction strategies around the city. So how are these waste reduction strategies can be implemented? So we created an integrated solid waste management plan. The different, <clears throat> the different uh, uh, policies, the three are practices, the waste reduction, waste segregation, waste collection, the door-to-door -door waste collection, and the recycling, the cost recovery, the final treatment and the landfill. For each one of these criteria, we developed um, and different kind of uh, uh, rules and regulations and political uh, policy measures. I will not go into details of each and every one of these because they are mostly technical and uh, requires a lot of time for me to explain each and every one of this. But yes, we, uh, we provided information on how can we achieve each and every one of these goals around the city. So one of the things that I have uh, understand over the uh, past few years that I have been involved in solid waste management with Kabul Municipality and Directorate of Sanitation with USAID, that the issues of solid waste management cannot be solved only if Directorate of Sanitation or Municipality or other authorities or organizations. The citizens should feel their responsibilities and should be answerable for their waste management as well. As long as the citizens don't uh, respond or don't uh, practice their responsibilities, the managerial authorities can never be succeeded. Yes, the managerial uh, um, authorities will uh, look into the technical issue, the technical development issues, but the citizens should also play their role. So in my today's presentation, I will look into some of the roles and responsibilities of citizens on how can they achieve or how can they play a vital role uh, in the solid waste management around the city. So the first thing is that the citizens should use, uh, stop using the single use plastic bags. In Kabul city and uh, the participants who live in Kabul city or who have visited Kabul city, they can know that on each and every point of the city, we can see a whole lot of uh, percentage of single use plastics thrown away everywhere. While if instead of these plastic, uh, single use plastic bags, if we can use the cloths bags or uh, cotton bags, then we can like uh, reduce the, the generation of uh, single use plastic bags. Uh, similarly, uh, we use a lot of uh, uh, HDP or PET bottles around the uh, cities uh, and cobble city. If we convert these, uh, the use of these PET or HDP bottles into these reusable, uh, uh, bottles, not only it will uh, reduce the uh, generation of municipal solid waste, but it will also give us a good uh, style in our personality. Segregate uh, your waste uh, source. Excuse me, uh, uh, could yeah. you please wrap up your presentation because we have one minute. Yeah, just uh, one minute, yeah. So uh, we developed this kind of uh, poster and distributed it around the households for them to understand which kind of waste should be uh, uh, put into which kind of bins for the waste segregation around the city. So we, in Kabul city, we usually see that the bins are not used properly. Uh, the people, they take their wastes uh, to the bins and then they throw away next to it. While instead of this, they can put it into the waste bins and uh, reduce the environmental impact uh, for the citizens. The waste litterings can be seen in the drainage lines everywhere around the city. So this can be stopped or eradicated by using the uh, municipal bins that are provided by municipal, Kabul municipality at different locations in the city. So as I said that the municipal, so, uh, the uh, healthcare and construction waste is uh, disposed with the municipal waste together. So if you look into this side, I'm not sure if everybody can see this or not, the uh, syringes and the uh, medical waste is disposed uh, in the municipal solid waste bins. While this should be uh, <clears throat> reduced and uh, the healthcare waste should not be disposed with the, uh, with the municipal solid waste management. So yeah, these were some of the points uh, uh, that the citizens uh, should uh, note and practice in order to uh, uh, 
promote the proper waste management uh, uh, system around the Kabul city. Thank you very much. This yeah. was all from me today. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Khushbin Saab, for a valuable and excellent presentation. Indeed, uh, solid waste management is a very, very important topic, uh, especially for a country like Afghanistan, where people don't have a soft uh, approach you know, to tackle and manage the solid waste. Thank you very much. So uh, uh, note that we have a question and answer session. So during question and answer session, the audience can ask questions and the speaker will answer the questions. For, so please note uh, your questions if you have from the speakers and then we may give you the floor in order to ask them. Thank you very much. So our next presenter and speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Ahmad Shabi Hozad from uh, Badakhshan University. Could you please start your presentation? Mr. Ahmad Shabi Hozad from Badakhshan University, I think. Can you hear us? Uh, I think he is not uh, here right now. So let's skip him and move. Uh, hello. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me, please? Yes. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Before being sure, uh, can uh, can you please tell me my slide is shared with you or not yet? Could you please share your slides? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have my slides now? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it is starting. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, we can see. Uh, first of all, uh, hello and uh, almost uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, my good afternoon, my colleagues uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Sari Din from Malaysia and Mr. Rashid Rushbin, one of our ex talented experts and on the audiences. <clears throat> this is Ahmad Shabir Hozad, uh, lecturer and Dean of Agriculture Faculty. Uh, first of all, I express my uh, condolence to our Alberoni uh, colleagues uh, for past away of our Alberoni colleagues. Uh, by the way, I would like to express, uh, present my um, advantages topic, which is second hand and about sustainable lifestyle and office strategies. It helps to change our lifestyle and have less impacts to uh, environment. Um, uh, first of and. Uh, First of all, we have the objectives. With what objective we follow in this presentation is, I quickly review it. The first objective we, uh, we follow here is understand the personal behaviors and lifestyle and the relation to environmental impacts. And second, understand the concept of responsible, sustainable, green, ethic consumption, and third, increase self-awareness about alternative consumption patterns. Uh, other is get to know uh, concrete examples of how to reduce consumption and change consumption patterns. Again, uh, strategies in energy, water, and waste reduction at home and in the office. Uh, learn green strategy to be more eco-friendly at office and campus. And uh, we divide this uh, presentation to three parts uh, and the first part is about the explanation of terminologies like sustainable lifestyle and what is lifestyle here uh, we first what's lifestyle uh, everything we do we have we use we display uh, can be related to our lifestyle and lifestyle is related to our ways of doing having using and displaying our behavior and all of the related products, objects, and infrastructures. Uh, on the other hand, our lifestyles are a matter of choices as well as habit that uh, can affect it from uh, 
these aspects like our social, cultural, technical, economical, political, institutional, and geographical surroundings, and all of the factors in those surroundings. I think uh, these slides do not more, need more explanation, and uh, I move to the next slides, and I will talk more on part two and three, this, because this is the explanation. And what is the sustainable lifestyle? Um, a sustainable lifestyle, uh, many actors, factors uh, can influence human behavior uh, and make sustainable lifestyle. And sustainable lifestyle is a cluster of habits, patterns of behavior that frame individual choice. In order to minimize the use of natural resources, uh, generation of waste, while it's uh, supporting by fairness, and prosperity for all. Uh, in other words, uh, sustainable lifestyle means rethinking our ways of living, uh, including how we buy and organize our everyday lives. Or uh, as citizens, uh, what we do at home, at work, the choices we make on food, housing, mobility, uh, consumer goods, leisure, communication and interaction contribute to build a sustainable lifestyle. Uh, this uh, figure shows that main factors, two main factors especially, uh, like uh, situational and behavioral influences, uh, influence hum human behavior and consequently uh, cause environmental changes. Uh, like uh, this is, uh, two main uh, factors like situational factors. The uh, situational factor is like geography, culture, infrastructure, social networks, and a situational framework, uh, access to capital information, and social learning is situational factor that influence human behavior. And the other main factor is behavioral factors like beliefs, norms, experiences, attitudes, habits, values, self-efficacy, awareness, altruism, perception, leadership, knowledge, identity. This is also the main factor that influence our behavior and uh, eventually cause environmental changes. For example, in some beliefs, water is worthy and should not be contaminated. Uh, and in some beliefs, we should throw out our ashes into the water, in the seas, in the, the rivers. This has uh, two different impacts to environment. Uh, it can make environment to positive or negative side. Uh, the part two is uh, <clears throat> it's some tips, eco tips especially, to adapt sustainable lifestyle. What is this, uh, this uh, eco tips or green tips? We follow these green eco tips for uh, having a sustainable lifestyle. First is reduce, uh, second re reuse, third is recycle, fourth is refuse, fifth is rot, and your food, conserve energy, conserve water. Uh, we will focus and talk more about 3R, this reduce, reuse, recycle concept. And for having shor a shortage of time, we skip the others and move to the next part. What is a uh, reduce? First, uh, uh, that help for sustain uh, the main uh, adaptation or uh, thing is to help for sustainable lifestyle is reduce. What's reduce? It's a uh, go zero waste. It's uh, an ultimate goal that we we, we, we will find, we will reach to uh, zero waste. This is our ultimate goal. Uh, simplify, uh, it means uh, simplify your match, your life as much as possible, and it creates less waste. Uh, and other is determine your impact. And this is, there is calculation softwares, eco footprints, uh, softwares, carbon footprints, and water footprints that uh, help to know how much uh, you have impact to environment, reduce purchases, uh, like uh, uh, you use three, uh, try to 30 day rule that uh, 
you write in a paper what you buy in or purchase in a month, then you will know uh, how much you have you buy you bought uh, that you do not really need. I replace disposable like uh, or disposable to reusable. It's, it helps a lot for environment. Buy used whenever it's possible. You buy used. Uh, no problem, make your own, provide things from waste, like you, you can make uh, anything from waste and this will reduce the waste. Borrow from friends, like uh, previous life, due to lack of facility or you know, we used from each other, it's no problem. Share with friends, like uh, some things you do not really need, like newspaper when you I read it, uh, then you can share with your friends, magazine, books. It helps uh, to reduce waste. Uh, three free home, like uh, replace paper napkins with clothes napkins. It's uh, like uh, this uh, paper napkins will reduce a lot of waste. You can use like previous life. You can use cloth napkin, bulk purchases, like uh, you can avoid extra packages for single use. Buy only what you need. It's uh, obvious what you need. You really you buy it. And you avoid creating trash. Uh, like uh, avoid using plastic bag for every single product. Uh, maybe you buy from store. You avoid it from plastic bag. You can have uh, you can have shopping bag like shopping bags bring you a uh, close bag uh, for shopping. Mag to go, you carry always a mag uh, to take out beverage, take out uh, water and others. Encourage hotels uh, to reduce this. Like uh, uh, hotels are interested to have disposal items. Let them know you are an eco-friendly person and avoid doing those things to you. And uh, the second thing that uh, help uh, for a sustainable lifestyle is uh, reuse. We all can be survive and the uh, existing products if we just reuse products a few times, like uh, reusable, switch from disposable to reusable products uh, uh, for having uh, like food and beverage containers cups, plates, shopping bags, you can switch from disposable to reusable, it's okay. Donation, donate and buy you. Uh, the product you don't really need, donate to others. Buy and sell used items, it's okay. You can buy it, used items. Share, a, share your blankets with each other, like share your home items to everyone instead of everyone buying those items individually, like everyone have different or a lot of items, a lot of uh, appliances. A community switch, design it a place uh, where everyone leave unwanted, unwanted items to others or replace plastic bags with the, the clothes bags, with the reusable bags, it's okay. Buy durable, buy durable items that be durable always. Teach drift. Uh, the other things that we reuse is uh, teach your children uh, wise economy and manage of money that uh, do not uh, spend their money for a lot of waste things or a lot of disposable things. Uh, kitchen reusable. Uh, we can switch from plastic uh, to glass and metal containers, uh, containers in your kitchen. Uh, from you can use it the reusable items in your kitchen, library or used bookstore. Make a used bookstore. We that's uh, we do not have much in Afghanistan. We can uh, make a used bookstore. Share with neighbors, loan mowers, ladders, and other things with your neighbors that they need. Office reuse, uh, that uh, office reuse, like uh, collect best of items for office students and selling for the next students of the next semester. And it, it can use uh, 
reuse other uh, students in the next semester. It's a very good strategy for the reuse items. The third things that uh, help for uh, sustainable lifestyle is uh, recycle, help uh, launch sustainable packaging. This is email for, you can email for the uh, companies for sustainable packages. They, they will uh, change the packages uh, according to your suggestions. Recycle content, you, you can suggest retailers that, that your products have should have a uh, highest recycle content. Uh, green paper containers made of from recycled materials that should have green, uh, high recycled materials. Pack it out when you travel somewhere and there is no bins uh, available here, you can pack it out with yourself and you can then you can throw out when you find the bins or some uh, good places. Azard Swiss, it's special handling and it needs a uh, high equipment facility. The part three is green office strategies. Uh, what we can do, why we should observe uh, eco-friendly practices in office. We should have uh, advantages here. Why we uh, why green? We should green our office because it's cost saving. Uh, it's employee health and productivity. It's a help a contribution to both positive camp, company reputation and to help the environment as a whole. Uh, the green office guys provide simple uh, steps for being a sustainability and have a sustainable lifestyle in our uh, office. This is the transportation, uh, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoors, environmental quality and uh, innovation. The first thing we, the first uh, strategy we should me. use in our yeah, that's office. A, excuse me, although your presentation is compiling, you have exceeded your time. It is time to wrap up. Could you please wrap up your presentation? Okay, okay, I'll finish as soon as possible. Thank you for mentioning. Uh, strategy that we use for transportation, the more uh, cars and transportation we use, the more carbon footprint, uh, use more for uh, fossil fuels and produce air pollution and environmental challenges. Strategies we use uh, for uh, transportation, we should have an alternative commuting um, transportation program in place like find an alternative way uh, like the other perform an alternative transportation employee survey, provide a survey about the alternative transportation in, for your employee. Maybe it, they will find another way. Provide transit fair reimbursement for employee community. Uh, pay them money for employee. Uh, probably they will come by walk or they, they will find another good way or use teleconferences, video conferences to reduce uh, travel. It helps a lot. Uh, benchmarking and track business travel, find standards for business travel. Permit alternative working and uh, arrangement uh, on this island use transportation. And uh, another thing is energy and to sphere saving energy is also the most effective ways to go green. Strategy for uh, observing energy and atmosphere is maximize natural lights and turn off unneeded lights, like uh, use natural light, remove uh, one bulb from three bulbs. In there is uh, in hotels, there is fluorescent lights. They have fixed it to three, four uh, lights. You can use the two of them and remove the others. Uh, the light is still um, the same. Turn off equipment, computers, printers, TV powers, um, strips, and lights when leaving office. Turn off the equipment, when, whatever you have in your office. Label lights, uh, switch with please. We have, we should have a label in our offices, our home, that please turn off the lights when not in use, something here. Conduct uh, 
for reminding people, conduct appliance audit, remove unnecessary. We should assign some people that uh, should have audit that uh, remove unnecessary equipment or turn off lights. Perform a lighting uh, audit for types and number of uh, lights. Uh, usually have audit for the, the things in your office. Keep windows and doors closed to prevent loss of heated and cold air. In winter, we should uh, we should have uh, closed the water, uh, the doors and windows, and uh, something like with transferring cold air or hot air. Do not uh, we should have keep them in our office. And the other things that we should, uh, the strategies we should observe in our office, uh, the materials and resources. The materials and resources we use help uh, a lot for having a green office. The strategy for materials and resources, you should use biodegradable products for disposable plates, cups, and bowls, and standardized workplace size layout furniture or uh, sit all office computers to divide print double sided or even uh, use half of paper for letters in offices that's reduce a lot of uh, uh, paper of, um, and also reduce bottle water by 80% like uh, everything use uh, water bottle, you can use mag, it reduce purchases by 80% of that bottle water, convert paper forms to electronic forms to reduce paper usage, uh, uh, print media and marketing materials and recycle paper, cancel unwanted paper publication, subscription or register of newsletters. If you can cancel it if it's unneeded or replace paper towels for hand dryers. If paper towels do not use much, we can uh, use, replace it for hand dryers. Uh, set quantifiable goals for paper use reduction, De like uh, determine alternative for paper reduction. Uh, I do not explain a more due to shortage of time and other things you should observe strategies and uh, offices, innovation and upgrades, operations and maintenance. Other activities for go going grain office, uh, like uh, uh, the strategy we should observe is update, always update office personals on green efforts regularly, like have a green events uh, with personals and something like that. Shift from closed to open plants with multiple purposes, like uh, modify your plants with green efforts, green uh, events. You can modify your, your work plans with that. Like not modify, maybe you can add it other green plants. Provide recycling education materials, like we can uh, provide signs everywhere that um, like environmental science do not use this or do not waste this or something uh, like uh, like uh, overuse. Uh, organize sustainability, focus community service project. Uh, we should have uh, organized some community service project like, uh, as I said before, design it a place that everyone can um, put their unwanted items to others like this, we can, uh, uh, provide, organize them, this uh, community services, and minimize walls and partitions and remodeling, or create a green team with an office champion and holder, or regular meeting with uh, your uh, personals, have a green meeting always, like uh, you have a green meeting every week or three, two, four times in a month, something like that. Uh, and install low flow devices uh, on all indoor plumbing fixtures like sink, uh, toilets, shower heads. Like uh, instead of having high flow devices, install the low flow devices in your 
sinks, toilets, and so it it helps a lot to reduce like uh, uh, um, resources uh, and something like that. And uh, uh, due to time constraint, could you please wrap up your presentation quickly? Yeah, thank you very uh, yeah. much. Okay. Yeah. Q and a session we have later on. So yeah, the audience will ask if they have. Thank you very much you. for your thank attention. You. Thank you very much for your excellent, uh, excellent presentation. The next You're speaker, right. uh, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, the next speaker is. Uh, yeah, Jawad, our uh, can, guest I, from, can I share my presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our guest from uh, Malaysia. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, your special, uh, uh, special uh, uh, as presenter and speaker for this webinar. Thank you for coming. Yes, please. Thank you, Jawad. Thank you. Uh, Jawad, can you stop your presentation so that sure, I can? Sure. Share? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank, sorry to disturb you. Uh, if you please uh, full screen your presentation, it could help to read text. Uh, please, there is a button. Uh, there, 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 there is a button at the uh, button of your slides, so you can yeah. see. This. Yes, please. Yeah, is it fine? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, very good morning. A very, very good morning to all of you, uh, and uh, thank you uh, for the invitation. Uh, and I'm also very happy to see uh, our students, uh, our ex students, uh, Mr. Emal and also Ms. Faiza. I'm very happy to see both of you. Uh, you, are, you, you are back to your country and you are doing uh, so many things for, for, for the country and also for the people. I'm very happy for that. And uh, thank you for the invitation again. So uh, what I would like to share, uh, perhaps on, uh, uh, it's, it's still on uh, some uh, environmental issues, but to, uh, I would like to share on uh, how does uh, urban forest, uh, uh, we can use urban forest as a model or as a, as an, as an example to, to mitigate some uh, environmental issues. Uh, because um, in most of the time when we deal with environmental issues, uh, it's about in urban areas because of the high uh, compact cities and towns and industrial areas and so on. So uh, urban forest is uh, 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 one of the strategies, one of the strategies that we can use uh, in order to solve or mitigate uh, some of the uh, environmental uh, issues that we have in not only in Kabul but even in most of the towns and cities uh, in the world. Okay. Okay. So I just want to share. Uh, this is what I, I do back at the university in UPM. So apart from just teaching on ecological and also uh, studies and also on urban forest and arboriculture, my my research is more on uh, urban uh, greening, urban green spaces. And apart from there, I also do services. I, I, I do check uh, the trees for the government bodies and also from private sectors, uh, because I'm also an, uh, uh, a certified arborist from the International Society of Arboriculture. So I do even um, services in terms of taking care of the trees and uh, so on in our uh, urban areas. Okay, uh, these are some of my publications about um, so our urban trees. Okay. So this will be my, uh, my, my part that I would like to uh, uh, do present to you all. So let's start with the background. Uh, as we know, I think all of us are aware that uh, the world is, world is urbanizing very, very quickly. Okay, so from the statistics, it, sh it shows that about by 2050, 70% uh, of the global population will, will be living in cities and towns. So, so what does this figure tell us? So of course, with the amount of uh, increase, amount of uh, increase in the population and so on, uh, often it results in the depletion of the uh, degradation of uh, natural ecosystems in and around in uh, uh, urban areas. So it is, it is a, a, a big challenge actually for uh, not only engineers and so on, but even for the plant, uh, urban town planners, uh, landscape architects and, 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 and so on, even the local town council to manage the, the, the city because it's, it's, it's a very um, 
complex environment. You have to take care of the of the development. At the same time, you even have to uh, take care of the, the the environment. So we have to have like a, a very sustainable or balanced kind of development with with the environment. Okay. So here are some of the definitions of what is urban forest or, or what is the concept of urban forestry is. So um, urban forest, I mean, in, in simpler terms, it, it may consist any, any trees. It can be consist one single tree or group of trees or even our parks and so on. These are what we call urban forest. If you can find any green spaces, any parks, any trees uh, in, in the context of other urban cities, then it is considered as an urban forest. And when it comes to the, the, the concept of urban forestry, it is considered as a, not only the science, but also the, the art and also the technology of managing trees and forest resources in, in our city uh, or, or towns. So here, I think, I think mo most of you are aware, here are some of the examples of uh, what is so-called of urban forest death that you uh, people have back in uh, Kabul. Okay, so these are the parks, these are the trees that you have So all these uh, comes under the concept of what we call as um, urban forestry. So why is it um, urban forestry is, is important in, in our, our city and also our uh, town, uh, in, in our uh, town perspective? Why, why is it uh, important? So mayors and also planners of others, even decision makers like engineers, landscape architects, uh, often they are unaware of the importance of the economic, social, and environmental benefits that urban forests provide. So here is where the role of um, the, uh, the, the landscape architects and also envi environmentalists have to play a role. Uh, because it's, it's not easy of, uh, for example, like when we have discussions with the local town councils, I mean, it's not easy to convince them just by having one or two or meetings or, trees or even our parks and so on. These are what we call urban forests. Okay, so, uh, so the issue is, I mean, we have to work together. Okay, we have to work together. We have to, we perhaps as a landscape architect, as an environmentalist, or even as an agriculturist, we have to uh, know the ways how to convince all these uh, peoples, for example, uh, those uh, town planners or architects or engineers, because it, it is, it is, um, um, it's not good. I mean, if you work in 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 silo, okay. So in in nature, okay, in nature, of course, each one of us we have our own specialties. But when it comes to city planning and so on, I mean, all of us, all these um, careers, different careers, have to come together. Okay. So I would like to highlight in here some of the potential. Uh, what is the functions of urban forest? Uh, as we can see, uh, trees, they have this uh, capability of reducing the effect of particular mat matters. Uh, I'm sure many of you over here, are, I mean, those who, are, who are, have chemistry background, you know the term particular method uh, matters, okay? This considers uh, all the heavy materials in the air or in the atmosphere or even uh, dust, okay? So the trees, they have this capability to absorb to absorb all these uh, materials. If you look at this picture, you can see there's a lot of all this particular um, matter, we call it PM, okay, which is being uh, deposited from most of this industrial area. And just imagine if you don't have this chunk of urban forest, okay, so all this particular matter from the industrial area will be blown to the housing areas, okay. So this picture, I mean, basically it shows how does urban forest or how does trees help to absorb all these particular matters in the end, uh, our, our urban uh, atmosphere. Okay, so these are some of the, the studies that have been done. So it's, it's not just having trees, okay? It's not just having trees, it's more than that. It's more than that because when, when it comes to, to, to absorb this particular matter uh, even more effectively, okay? We have to even consider the planting design. So if you look at the picture at the top, Okay, if we plant in a such a way, just in a row, and it only consists about one species, okay, so it is not that effective. But if you look at the picture below, okay, you have different species, different size of trees. This uh, kind of um, uh, way is even more effective because um, when whenever the wind blows, all these heavy materials and so on, it, it will try to trap all these 
particulate. It will try to trap in rather than blowing all these uh, heavy materials to the other, other part of the city. So this is also one strategy uh, that we can play, perhaps from the landscape architect perspective, that it's not just planting trees, but planting trees in a, in a, in a, in a manner which you can uh, maximize okay, to, to absorb this particular method. Okay, so uh, apart from that, of course, I mean, we know, I mean, trees also purify um, the atmosphere. For example, to the process of photosynthesis, they absorb a lot of carbon dioxide and release oxygen for the use of the human beings. And this is also a, a, a good thing because carbon dioxide, they have the capability to, to absorb heat. So if you have a lot of carbon dioxide in your city, then a lot of heat will be trapped. So this is also another function of planting more trees or having forests in our cities. So these are examples of some of the research that have been done. And, um, and also urban trees also have, have been proven to, to show that they can uh, lower the temperature three to seven degrees in the summer and also raise the humidity of our city by nine to 23%. Okay? So if you look at this picture, if you see the left and the right hand corner of the picture, okay, you have the suburb area and also rural where you have a lot of vegetation and so on. So in these areas, the temperatures are low. Okay, so when you go to the downtown where you have um, not many uh, forests or not many uh, green spaces and so on, so normally the, the, the temperature goes up. So basically, I mean, it shows that, that the function of having trees or urban forests or even uh, green spaces in our cities, it will be able to even reduce um, the, the temperature. Okay, so this is another example. I mean, it shows clearly uh, the, the temperature differences in places with and without um, green areas or green elements. Um, this is another function, which is um, a very important, particularly in countries like uh, Malaysia, because we, we, we get um, a lot of rain uh, throughout the year. So as we know, in most of these urban areas or urban cities and towns, there's um, no much uh, land available for all this water to be absorbed. So most of the time we have all these, uh, a lot of uh, concrete um, um, pavements and, 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 and so on. So all these materials can absorb all this excessive water which comes from the rain. So we need a lot of uh, green spaces, uh, grasslands or even soil to absorb all this uh, excessive water. So if you see from this picture, it shows clearly it, or, or the picture on your, on your left hand side, whenever it rains, of course, it, it has some uh, percentage of erosion, but it is, it is very small. And if you can see even the stream, uh, it doesn't, the volume is not so much compared to the picture on your uh, right hand side. When, when you don't have tree, you have a lot of uh, surface runoff. Of course, you will have erosion and that will be also increase in the, in the load of sediments and also um, water volume. So this is what is uh, happening in most of our cities. Uh, even even in Kuala Lumpur, I mean, if whenever it rains for just one hour, we will we will tend to have uh, floods floods because there's no way for the for the water to 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 run. Okay, you know, there's no way for the water to 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 being absorbed because of the lack of soil or or green spaces in the in the in the city city area. Uh, this is a, a concept um, sponge cities uh, concept which was introduced by China. So the idea of this. Um, concept is actually to, to create more green spaces um, in our city center so that all these green, uh, green spaces like our green parks and so on can act as a sponge, can act as a sponge whenever there's heavy rainfall and so on. Okay, so this is an idea. This is also a strategy that perhaps we can uh, um, apply in our cities and also town. And um, this is also another example, for example, rather than having a, a, a concrete kind of uh, drainage, we can also try to apply like this kind of strategies, for example, bioswale, okay, bioswale, like in our parks, uh, rather than directing all the water into our concrete drain, why not we direct all this excessive water into a, a bioswale, because all this uh, excessive water will be being uh, absorbed uh, uh, into the, the earth. So this is also a, a, a strategy to, to avoid all these uh, floods, floods in our um, urban towns and also cities. 
Uh, rain garden is, is, is another strategy. Okay, rain garden is also a, a method which we can uh, apply. So uh, this is a very suitable um, uh, method which we can apply in our uh, perhaps in a smaller scale, for example, like in our housing areas and so on. Okay, so it's it's also like a bio swill. Okay, all this excessive water from our homes will be absorbed into the soil rather than um, um, draining all this water into our concrete um, drainage and so on. Okay, so apart from all these uh, other environmental uh, uh, benefits that we gain, uh, urban forest is by having more, more green spaces in our cities, more trees and so on, it also uh, automatically will, will uh, uh, attract more uh, wildlife into our, our, our cities and so on. Uh, this is some of the examples. Uh, I'm sure many of you you're aware of, of how compact is uh, Singapore and so on. But but you see, I mean, in the in the middle of uh, of the city, you can still find all these uh, river otters uh, coming into the city and so on. And and and, and this is a, a, a good uh, strategy actually to to bring back all these our our biodiversity uh, into our 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 cities and towns. Okay, I think this is the the the, the the most important part. Um, some of the, the, the way forward that perhaps we can uh, apply, perhaps um, I, I'm just giving some suggestions. Uh, I haven't been to Kabul. <laughs> I, I really don't know the real scenario, but perhaps this is some of the, uh, the strategies that perhaps we can apply. Okay, we can apply, but uh, for example, I, I'm sure many of you from, from, from Kabul or even the other parts of Afghanistan, you are, you are, you are out. I mean, you're to, to other countries to do your uh, postgraduate studies and so on. So it's, it's good because I mean, you, you, you should come back and also uh, contribute back whatever knowledge that you learn from all these countries. I mean, you have to come back and you have to share with your local government and so on. And the other important thing that perhaps we can apply in, in perhaps in Kabul is a, like a continual networking kind of thing that um, between the, the government bodies and with the other government bodies in other countries and so on. Uh, this is also uh, 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 a good way, uh, a very sustainable manner to, to have a two-way uh, working partners between perhaps Kabul and other, other countries. So uh, it is the, 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 the responsible of perhaps of you guys who, who, who went overseas and did your studies and so on to, to come back to your country and, and, and do all this collaboration. Do not stop uh, collaborating with your supervisors and with your all your other professors back in your universities. Tend to um, continue the collaboration work and so on. Okay, and and even uh, in terms of doing research, uh, try to focus uh, doing uh, research in the context of the Kabul itself because I believe that there's a lot of studies that need to be done in in in, in Kabul and and I think our your your focus of research should be in the context of. Kabul or in perhaps in, in the context of Afghanistan, so that um, more, more ideas can be generated uh, uh, for, for your country and for your, for your city and so on. And of course, I think uh, there should be even uh, knowledge and capacity building, uh, continue, I think, uh, learning uh, new things. Um, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm sure you have all the, the even the funds to send your your people to, to other countries to learn and so on. I think uh, capacity building is also important. Once you're back to your country and I mean, to, to, your, to, your, to your town, uh, also you, you have this uh, responsible to continue teaching your people. Okay, so now you have to take the responsible in, uh, in decimating the information, uh, perhaps to the local town councils and so on. So I think uh, this is how perhaps one of the ways or strategies to bring in the ideas from outside, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no, because not all the ideas that we get from uh, from the other countries can be applied in the context of Kabul or even Afghanistan. Okay, so we have to play around. What are the some of the suitable methods which can be applied uh, in, in the context of Afghanistan and so on? Okay, so uh, this, um, of course, these are some of the things uh, you guys are doing back in Kabul. Uh, 1 million three by 2030 and, and, and so on. And even the local town councils are also doing very well uh, by planting um, uh, street trees and so on. Uh, so with that, um, I would like to say um, thank you. Thank you to, to all of you for your attention. Yeah, thank you.
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sritaran. Uh, it is uh, for, for a nice and excellent presentation. Uh, it is uh, our honor to have you in, take a part in this webinar. Uh, I was very impressed with your presentation, the length of the city urban forest. Indeed, it is. That said that we have few for of these in Kabul City, the leg of attention for these lengths in Kabul City hospitals. So uh, I am curious to know something, and I will ask that those questions in, uh, in its question and answer sessions. So we will move uh, to uh, now. I would like to uh, give the floor to our uh, final uh, presenter and speaker, uh, uh, Emal Ahmad Hussainzad from uh, al Uni Uni University. Yes, please. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me the time to uh, share with you what I have done. But before I start sharing, I would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, from Afghanistan, from different universities, uh, from National Environmental Protection Agency, Badashan, and also Dr. Sri joining us all the way from Malaysia. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, 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 present something about uh, a very important issue in uh, Afghanistan's uh, big cities uh, such as Kabul uh, and that is uh, air pollution. Um, uh, uh, before I move on to uh, my uh, 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 presentation, um, I'm attached to, I would like to say that I'm attached to Alberni University uh, Department of Horticulture and uh, I've conducted uh, uh, my studies in uh, different majors, including air pollution and urban green spaces. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, take you through my presentation through a, uh, a formal way of um, research, which starts with the introduction, the research problem, the objective and methods, and uh, going through the results and conclusions. Uh, air pollution is, uh, uh, when we define it, it's anything that's harmful and it's added to the air. So that's what we call air pollution. It's uh, not only a problem in Afghanistan, big city, but uh, it's a problem globally. Um, and uh, I um, saw some statistics recently that around 6.5 uh, million people die every year from uh, this phenomena. So it's a, it's a very, very um, harmful uh, phenomenon and uh, maybe it, it, it kills more people than, than the war does. Um, so uh, what we call air pollution is already defined and uh, it, it, uh, to be mentioned that it doesn't, it, it not only harm humans, but it also harms other uh, things. For example, plants, uh, for example, uh, buildings, uh, institutions, um, and even industries. So it's harmful to everything, um, including uh, humans, which are uh, the most important part of this planet. Uh, what are these air pollutants? Uh, they are uh, categorized into two parts, uh, usually. One, uh, particulate matters, which are um, solid, uh, tiny, uh, things uh, uh, taking from two point uh, uh, it, it's, it's different in size uh, and the other one is the gases which is uh, either primary or secondary for example nitrogen oxide ozone which is a secondary um, uh, uh, pollutant uh, sulfur dioxide and uh, carbon monoxide and many others so the problem here is uh, that we haven't investigated uh, air pollution enough uh, so we can uh, propose any uh, any ways to to tackle this uh, this issue so we first will go through uh, the introduction of this uh, air pollution which we have done and the second one we, in the second part we'll propose some solutions to uh, some some practical solutions or propositions to solve this issue. So that's our objective uh, for this uh, research. As we say that it's not only 
uh, a local phenomenon, but it's an international issue as well. Um, I've chosen Kabul for uh, this research, the, the review I've conducted, uh, and it's because it's one of the biggest cities in Afghanistan uh, with more than 5 million people, uh, with around 5 million people living in. So my review included four steps, the review of uh, uh, what pollution is and what types of pollution we have. Second, uh, what are, what's air pollution um, and uh, what are the air pollutants? Um, the third one, the third part of my review included the air pollution in Afghanistan cities. And the fourth part was proposing uh, ways to tackle uh, air pollution. So uh, for the first part, which is the type of uh, air pollution, which is the type of the pollu pollution, um, I have uh, uh, reviewed uh, many articles, uh, which uh, uh, got me through, which got me to a conclusion that there are many types of pollution. This is not a conclusive list, but uh, we have many more, but these are the most important ones, which include uh, air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution, and many others. But air pollution is among the most important and famous ones, uh, which causes the most destruction. The second part of review, the results of the second part of review was uh, the uh, the air pollution, the, the, the things that cause air pollution. It, uh, as I said, it, uh, it's divided into two parts, the particulate matters and the gases, uh, which have been mentioned here uh, in the right side of this table. The third part of the review included uh, the, the, the air pollution in Afghanistan cities. The main cause of air pollution in Afghanistan cities is uh, coming from transportation and vehicles. Uh, it also comes from uh, the rough roads, the not paved roads um, and the traffic. Uh, it also comes from the poor quality of fuel uh, that we consume uh, either uh, for transportation or vehicles or, or, or for um, our kitchens or daily uh, usages the consumption of uh, coal and uh, also not allowing trees to grow, cutting, cutting it down uh, and decreasing the urban green spaces. So these are the, the main sources of air pollution and causes of the air pollution. So after we know what are the causes, um, we propose uh, the ways to tackle air pollution in Kabul city. Um, it's uh, listed in, uh, in sequence, uh, the first part, which was uh, the cause of the air pollution was transportation. Uh, so the first thing we have to do, and we propose that the authorities and uh, even the public should do is to manage the transportation section. Managing transportation section doesn't mean that we have to stop using cars, we have to stop using vehicles. It means that we have to control our fuel quality that we use. We have to use uh, alternative ways of the transportation. Instead of using cars, we can use public transportation and uh, uh, many other ways to manage this transportation. So it can also, uh, it can also have the, the, um, the aspect of the government that they can apply uh, uh, and also the aspect of the public uh, that they have to take care of. Um, because without the combination of uh, the efforts of both parties, I think we will not go anywhere. Uh, uh, increasing urban green spaces, which Dr. Sri also pointed out, uh, urban green spaces have uh, the capacity to um, absorb uh, pollutants, uh, either in, in the face of uh, particulate matters, they absorb it, through their leaves and then it's washed out or through uh, the absorption of the gases which they turn into uh, uh, many other uh, products. Um, and we can uh, control uh, the burnings of the household specifically during the winter season when it is uh, very cold. So people burn coal and, uh, and other um, harmful stuff that create air, air pollutants. Um, and also the, uh, the, the, the very last one, which is also an important one, is to increase uh, public awareness, either uh, through 
the institutions or through uh, media, uh, through schools and, and many other means. Um, I've conducted some of the studies, um, uh, specifically one of them, which um, points out the, important, the importance of urban green spaces uh, and its absorption capacity uh, of air pollutants. Um, and uh, when it comes to the absorption of carbon dioxide, which is the main factor in uh, global warming, um, heating up the cities, so uh, the urban forests or urban green spaces in the city can decrease the effects of air pollution. Um, and uh, uh, of course, we have uh, uh, half a million cars, according to uh, some of the statistics. So we got to manage that, either decrease it or increase the, the quality of the uh, gases or the, uh, the fuels that we use. Uh, for when it comes to the household uh, the solid fuel usage, we have to find alternatives. Uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't propose any specific alternative because it needs a, a very thorough study. Um, so I propose, uh, besides uh, proposing uh, alternative for solid waste for solid fuel, I also propose um, studies that should be conducted in each part of these proposals. So um, a, a very uh, strong connection between um, the researchers within uh, universities is required. Um, also, the, the, the connection between local researchers and international researchers are, 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 is, are, is also required. Um, this program is uh, one of the efforts that we, uh, we uh, did to, to join all the researchers, specifically in the environmental issues. So it's a, it's a good sign. Uh, but we hope uh, further studies uh, will be shared and conducted um, specifically in air pollution uh, topics. Uh, uh, and, and I wish everybody best of luck. These are some of my studies which I have conducted. Many of them are related to Kabul city, air pollution. Um, some of them are related to Malaysia as well. So you can have a look at and thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, Emal Hassan for your excellent presentation. So uh, yes, we are going to move to the next step and session, uh, which are yeah. Before that, uh, uh, um, we would like to ask our second keynote speaker uh, if she is prepared to present uh, her keynote speech. So we will give uh, a short time for her to do that. And then next we will move to our final session, uh, question and answer session. And then at the end, we will get uh, the uh, um, uh, final closing note from uh, Dr. Faidun Karimi, the Chancellor of Albanian University, Vice Chancellor of Albanian University. Yes, please. Uh, Ms. Faiza Darkhani, if you're ready. Yes, please. Could you hear me, please? Yes. Uh, hello and good day, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, you all and thanks for your uh, hard working going on there. And uh, uh, I would like to express my condolences to the Albany colleagues that it's really sad and. Uh, um, I know that this is the Afghanistan situation. We have to keep on going, though. So, and uh, uh, um, also, it's mentionable that uh, for the time being, we uh, we are facing to the very insecure situation uh, right now. A very uh, um, uh, the security is not going uh, good here and we are not even able to go to the uh, office that's why i'm just connected um, from home and i i'm i'm working from home and uh, i'm just uh, keep on uh, working and i'm losing the connection so let's see that uh, how can we manage it uh, i hope that i can uh, uh, I can just add something. 
so thank you all for um, for uh, all for all the good presentations and good presenting. Uh, from my side, I, I would like to just mention something that we have been working on uh, uh, um, as a um, national prevention uh, uh, national. Um, uh, it's just. National Environmental Protection Agency Director. Uh, we have been working to find the challenges in Badakhshan and to, uh, to work on and, and uh, to make an assessment to find what are the challenges. So we, we conduct work in there and we became and we, uh, we made a very first draft of the, the challenges and I'd like to just uh, mention some challenges uh, which are going on in here. So uh, here are just, just I have uh, it, I will just mention it, I think that would be uh, okay. Uh, the, the first one is the urbanization problems, uh, as I heard that you all also mentioned this one. In Badakhshan, we have also the urbanization problems, which, may, uh, which is the reasons of so many other problems in here, and the people uh, do not um, care much about the uh, um, the environmental the environmental uh, protection. And the next one is the increase of the vehicles for the transportation. That's why this is the next problem uh, that Badakhshan is facing to this one. And uh, the third one is the air pollution. We are facing the air pollution in here that uh, Um, uh, the reasons, uh, the reason for the air pollution is transportation. And uh, the the other one is the the office of the uh, water pollution in Badakhshan, and the next one is the. I think the internet is very big, so I stop her video and despite the stopping her video, we couldn't get her voice. So we will move uh, to our uh, uh, final session, which is the question and answer sessions. And uh, yeah, since we are already out of time and we ran out of time and couldn't answer all everyone's questions. So we ask specific audience or uh, who may have a question. So please uh, uh, ask a short questions and may get few questions and then we'll wrap up to uh, closing uh, the webinar uh, and uh, web closing speech will be delivered by uh, Dr. Freydun from uh, Albany University. Yes, please. Uh, so right now we are in question and answer session. So uh, if you have any question from the speaker, specific speaker, so please call a specific name and then ask your questions. Introduce yourself. Yes, please. Yes, we have a question from audience. Yeah, uh, Dr. Uh, Karimi as a questions. Yes, please. You, you can ask your question. He has raised his hand. Yes. Could, could, you, could you please ask your questions? One question. Yeah, I'm asking. Uh, thank you very much for the presentators. There was uh, nice presentations. Shabir, I cannot pronounce it. Yeah, Mr. Shabir. Oh, uh, Excuse me, since you're the quality of net traffic is uh, very poor, so could you please stop your video and just ask your questions by order? Uh, 
there is a technical problem, so he may come back and uh, we will move to the next audience. And uh, yeah, Ahmad uh, Shukib, Shuk, uh, if, if I'm correct to pronounce her name, his name. Could you please ask uh, your question and specify the speaker name? Yeah, thank you. I hope you are hearing me. Uh, could you please yep. introduce yourself, who you are, and uh, ask your question? Yes, my name is Ahmad Shahim, and I am uh, one of the residents of Faizabad City. So just uh, in Faizabad City, we have a uh, waste, uh, which is uh, manageable and recyc uh, recyclable. So I would like to ask uh, the uh, presenters which one uh, who can... Uh, answer this question uh, that how to manage this uh, wastes and uh, what would be your suggestion and solution for the wastes uh, city especially the uh, could you please specify which which speaker your question goes to please we have five speakers and two keynote speakers just specify yeah maybe mr emal can answer this sure Was it specific or uh, I should repeat my question? Uh, I think I think Mr. Khushbin should answer this question because he presented on waste management. I think uh, yeah, yeah, that would major. be because uh, I was not uh, uh, in the whole Khushbin? session. I'm sorry. Yeah, carry on. Uh, thank you, Shaheem Saeb, for your uh, uh, question. From my understanding, the solid waste management of Badakhshan, uh, uh, first of all, I'm not sure if there is... Uh, a specific research study uh, conducted or not to understand the uh, percentages or the composition of the different type of waste. So if the uh, percentages are uh, known and the composition is known, then uh, what we can do is that to specify what type of uh, waste is uh, at the highest percentage. Suppose in Kabul, uh, for example, in Kabul city, the highest percentage of waste is food waste. So we always focus on my, uh, the, the first priority of municipality is to manage the, uh, the compostable or the organic waste. And for this, we always propose composting facilities, di uh, digestion facilities, uh, uh, anaerobic digestion facilities, something like that. So I'm not sure about the composition of solid waste in Badakhshan, but uh, if it's mostly the organic waste, then I think the uh, authorities or the managerial uh, organizations, they should go for the composting or anaerobic digestion. Similarly, if it's mostly about plastic waste or paper, paper waste, and there are uh, certain recyclable facilities in Kabul, like uh, they convert paper into toilet paper, they convert plastic into uh, pipes. So these kind of uh, um, uh, uh, technologies can be proposed. But first of all, it is very important to understand the composition of the solid waste that is generating in Badakhshan city. I hope your question is uh, answered. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So please raise your hand if you have any question and then introduce yourself and directly ask your question from a spe specific speaker. And the next uh, audience that he may have a question is uh, Sharifullah Dawladzai. Could you please introduce yourself and ask your question? Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all, all the participants. My name is Sharifullah. I'm the scholar of uh, MSc Horticulture in India. Uh, I'm so delighted to the part of this important uh, Zoom webinar. And thanks from uh, DRD to arrange this wonderful webinar. And uh, uh, I have a, one suggestion and one question. Uh, a few days ago, I have seen the uh, international uh, ranking of the uh, polluted city in the world. Unfortunately, the Kabul city is the rank fourth in this ranking, uh, which is the, a very bad condition for the uh, people who reside in Kabul city. Um, I hope the government of Afghanistan take a serious action about this issue and all the active uh, university professors give advice and help and contribute the government to uh, decrease the uh, pollution degree in the Kabul city for uh, a normal life. And uh, um, my question is a specific, uh, uh, what is the responsibility of Afghanistan government to decrease the air pollution in Kabul city? 
Uh, th thank you very much for your comment and suggestions uh, from to whom your question goes to. I think we don't have any delegates yeah, from yeah, governmental yeah. organization uh, here. We don't have yeah, any but, governmental organization. Uh, no, no, sir. This uh, only uh, you uh, as uh, you answer uh, as a uh, professor. Uh, and my question is goes to Esanla Kramze, which is my classmate in university. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Akram Zoysaib, could you please uh, answer the question? I think he's not here right now. So uh, uh, may, may I have the opportunity to elaborate? Sure. Okay, no problem. Okay. Anyone uh, the answer? Uh, I have no problem. Uh, all right. Um, uh, dear uh, Sharifullah, thank you very much for joining us from uh, India. Uh, I'm not uh, um, an employee of the National Environmental Protection Agency, but um, uh, Ms. Uh, 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 Paiza Darkhani is, uh, is the director of uh, the National Environmental Protection Agency, Badakhshan. But as I'm a, 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 a university lecturer, uh, so, on behalf of uh, the lecturers of um, Albir University, specifically from Agriculture Faculty and uh, Horticulture Department, uh, what we can do to mitigate the uh, urban air pollution or urban pollution is that we conduct research. So, as I said in my presentation as well, um, we cannot propose anything without, uh, 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 an, uh, uh, without conducting any research. So the first thing we can do is to find a, a, an issue, specific issue in, in the air pollution or pollution uh, topic. And then we conduct a study, the, a, a standard study on it. And then we propose something to it. But besides these, uh, conducting these studies, uh, this year we have uh, planted around um, um, thousand uh, trees and shrubs in the in, in the um, in the surroundings of Alberi Alberi University. This is one of the effort of as as uh, lecturers and um, you know on behalf of students as students because students also joined us uh, to mitigate um, air pollution air pollution. So I propose to uh, specifically to Kabul University and the universities which are located in the huge cities in the big cities such as uh, Balkh University um, and Herat University and many other universities to take on this initiative and plant as many trees as they can. So, uh, because, because that's one of the ways we can mitigate uh, air pollution. And uh, uh, we don't find any standard uh, research these days uh, in, in terms of air pollution in Kabul city. I'm trying to do uh, an act taken on some uh, topics to work on and it's underway. Hopefully uh, some new research will come into play. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So if there is any, we will take two more short questions before proceeding to closing ceremony. So if you have any question, please raise your hand. Uh, okay, I have a short question from Dr. Sirtaran from Malaysia. Uh, uh, as I was really impressed with your presentation, uh, you uh, presented uh, like about the lands of the city, which is urban forest. Uh, I'm curious to know, uh, in particular, what is the difference between green spaces in the city and the urban forest? Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Jawad. Thank you, thank you for the question. Um, when, when we use the term uh, green spaces, I mean, it's, it's like an umbrella kind of term. Um, so green, urban green spaces is an is a, is a umbrella term which uh, encompasses even uh, the uh, urban forests, urban parks, uh, uh, even green wall, uh, rooftop garden, and so on. So when we say urban green spaces, maybe we, we, we say in a, in, a, in a 
in a perhaps in a bigger perspective. That's that's the umbrella kind of term, which consists of all these green elements. So urban forest for for per se, it, it is more regarding about the standing trees, about the standing trees and so on. So it's, it's a function of the trees rather than the, the spaces itself. So it's not like the parks. So so it's more on the element, the element of trees when we when we when we use the word urban forestry. When we use the word urban green spaces, it's even it will, we, are, we are talking from a bigger perspective uh, in terms of the physical uh, space itself rather than the elements which is um, uh, about uh, trees and so on. Yeah, thank you very much. Speaking practically, uh, I'm not an expert in the field, but uh, I think we have green spaces in Kabul, but about urban forest, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know if we, if do we have any, and maybe the experts in the field will, will answer these questions. Yeah, so actually, I mean, in fact, I mean, in, 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 in the, the trees that you have in at your parks, the trees that you have along your streets and so on, the, the trees that you have in front of your houses, your, your universities and so on, all these are, I mean, it, it comes under uh, urban forestry. Nice. Uh, it, it's under the term urban forestry. But, but the only difference is that when we use the term urban green spaces, then it, we, are, we are not only looking at the trees, but we are also looking at the physical spaces actually. For example, urban parks and, and, and so on. So nice. whenever we talk about urban parks, it's not only, only about the trees, but also about the, the, the spaces actually, the, 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 the physical space of the park itself. Thank you for the answer, thank you. Sure, thank you, thank you Jawad, thank you. Thank you, so uh, yeah, uh, if we, if there is any, uh, we'll take the final question and last questions. If no, then we will proceed to closing ceremony. Yes, I think it seems there's no questions. Yes, thank you very much everyone for excellent presentation and audience and to joining this webinar initiated by Alberta University, one of the best universities, public universities in Afghanistan in collaboration and partnership with uh, uh, Environmental Protection, Protection Agency, Badakhshan and that technical partnership, which is entirely virtually hosted by DIAGD Afghanistan, which is a discussion platform based on artificial intelligence. Yes, the final and closing notes will be delivered by Vice Chancellor of Alberini, Dr. Freydun. Could you please, yeah, uh, uh, give your keynote, uh, uh, final notes. Closing notes, yes. It seems that seems that Dr. Freydun is out of uh, uh, the platform and he, yeah, yeah, just he knocked the door. Yes, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Emal Ahmad, if you, uh, if you have any uh, supplementary or complement closing notes, you can uh, Take opportunity. Or oh, I, I think I, I, can, I cannot represent Dr. Uh, Karimi, but uh, because he's my colleague in the department and also Faiza Darhani, uh, one of my previous uh, 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 classmates. Uh, so uh, on behalf of them, I can uh, uh, give some final uh, words. Uh, I hope. I, I can deliver what, what they wish to say in, uh, in the final note. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, 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 the presenters specifically, our speakers uh, from Ghazni University, Mr. Isanullah Akramzoy, uh, Mr. Khushbi, uh, Mr. Hoza, the Dean of the Faculty, the, uh, Faculty of Agriculture of Badashan University. Uh, uh, my my ex uh, my co my ex co supervisor uh, Dr. Sridharan uh, from University of Putra, Malaysia, which I'm uh, proud of uh, being a student of a student of him um, uh, last time during my master study. Thank you very much for joining uh, this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, this is uh, one of the first webin webinars. Uh, organized uh, by Alberini University. This is not, not the last, so, it'll be, so it will be followed uh, by other webinars in different um, facets and different majors. So um, thank you very much for joining. The participants who have joined through uh, the, the Zoom links uh, 
or through uh, social media. Thank you very much all. Um, we uh, wish to have uh, uh, academic discussions, debates, uh, and sharings of researches through uh, virtual means during the COVID uh, uh, times. Um, we, uh, I also would like to um, uh, would, would like to encourage all the uh, students, the lecturers, and, and the, the public to uh, take care of themselves, uh, to keep uh, distance, um, and uh, meet virtually as we did today. And it was a very productive uh, meeting. Um, Albertian University, uh, uh, under the uh, su supervision and uh, the leadership of uh, the academic uh, vice chancellor, Fredun, Fredun Karimi, um, always encouraged studies, researchers, and this is one of the efforts we, we did um, uh, by, by introducing the webinars, uh, joining in uh, or, or inviting the researchers from uh, local universities and uh, uh, other institutions, as well as inviting international uh, researchers, uh, such as the ones from Malaysia. Uh, we are looking forward to invite others as well. Um, anybody who would like to join us in the future uh, webinars, we will uh, we will disclose uh, the topics of the new studies, uh, the, the new webinars, um, and uh, later we will invite um, our uh, uh, keynote speakers and uh, our speakers. So uh, thank you very much once again, and uh, thank you very much to Diagri. Uh, and specifically to uh, to Mr. Hafbin, thank you very much for uh, having for helping us technically uh, this webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, all right, that's all for today. See you in our next uh, coming webinar. Please stay in touch. Thank you. Have a nice and safe uh, time.